Hello, I'm Gary Quinn, and welcome to another episode of Ready, Set, Live. My guest today is Maria Conchita Alonso, a three-time Grammy-nominated recording artist, actress, and an incredible woman. She made her Hollywood film debut in Paul Mazursky's Moscow on the Hudson with Robin Williams. She also starred alongside Nick Nolte, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sean Penn, and Nicolas Cage. She continues to tour throughout Latin America as part of her music career and begins a new film titled Mr. Hyde, directed by Dan Brothers. Don't go away. I'll be right back with Maria Conchita. Welcome to the show, Maria. Thank you, Gary. <laughs> it's your second, <laughs> second appearance. I know the last time you lost your voice. <laughs> uh, yes, I did. But um, look, today I have it. <laughs> you know, your career is something that most actors wish for. Uh, how did you start in this extraordinary path? I know you were... You have an interesting background in Venezuela, and you were Miss Venezuela. How did it start, really? It started when I was a teenager, um, and um, I, I wanted to always I wanted to be an actress and a singer. And uh, I, uh, my brother had a one of my brothers had a girlfriend that was Miss Venezuela back then, and she said, "You want to be that? Okay, go in a contest in a beauty pageant because uh, in Venezuela the beauty pageants open doors if you want to be in this industry." So I'm like, "Okay, I never cared about um, being." Uh, beauty queen and all this thing ah oh, you know no, no 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 that's not me i'm very hippie bohemian i don't care um but i wanted to be what i am today so i said okay so that's i entered a uh, beauty pageant miss teenager and i won and then i won the miss teenager of the world and then that made be, made me become like the one of the biggest models uh, of the time in venezuela and that's how it started all after that you know came miss venezuela i was um I went to uh, the Miss World pageant in 1975, and uh, I gained, I was second favorite, I gained weight, uh, and uh, I became in the seventh runner-ups, you know, because I had to get a new dress, a new swimming suit, because the nerves made me eat a lot, and yeah, but I had a lot of fun. It wasn't meant to be for me to be Miss World. <laughs> <laughs> Did you find that the acting opportunity came quick or was it you had to pay some dues to come to Hollywood or how did it how, how did the first role happen? Oh, it, I, I think it happened quite uh, quick. Yeah, I, I, I always wanted to come here and uh, I left. I was a very big star already in Venezuela and in other countries because I, I, I made a lot of soap operas. Um, and then I just, uh, I did record my new, my, my, my first album back then uh, um, before coming here. I, I recorded two albums before coming here, which were number ones in Venezuela, and they were in English. Uh, the label, the record company, changed my name to Ambar uh, because they wanted to create a little, uh, you know, people to say, who is Ambar? Because I was very, very big, very well known. So they, they, they said, okay, who is she? You know, she's, she's an actress, she's beauty pageant, blah, 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 model. Blah, blah. And then for about 10, and then they played the songs on the radio and people were, oh, who is she, Donna Summer? Because the song was in English and the songs were, uh, you know, disco music, so Gloria Gaynor, uh, Donna Summer, no, and no. And then like 10 days later, you know, it, the, the spectation, the spectative was huge. Mm -hmm. And then they said, no, it's Maria Conchita. And they were, oh, nobody could believe it. So, you know, I came to, uh, to LA and I was signed uh, with uh, A&M Records. And that's when, this is when I was here, this is when I recorded my first album in Spanish, which, which was just called Maria Conchita. And it became number one in many countries. But my first thing I did, was uh, uh, in um, um, Fantasy Island. Mm -hmm. In Fantasy Island, um, I had a friend of mine that would come here almost every weekend from Venezuela because we used to have uh, uh, um, air, the planes that, that 
came direct, direct flights from Venezuela. They were like seven hours. So I had friends that would just come for the weekend. They would, they would fly Friday and they would go back on Monday. One of those friends was going out with Breed Eklund. <laughs> uh, she used to be a, you know, very well known back then. And Breed had a, a friend that was a manager. And so that's how I was introduced. That manager gave, brought me into an agency. That agency sent me to a lot of auditions. I used to get all the auditions that I went through, being the first one, uh, Fantasy Island. Meanwhile, I was taking ballet, jazz lessons, like five, six a day. Oh, my God, it was, it was really fantastic. And then um, I got Moscow on the Hudson because there used to be... a. a, a Hollywood Reporter had a column at the last page called the George Christie column, which was like parties in, in town and all that stuff. And, and they, the, the, the secretary of the casting director for Moscow on the Hudson saw my picture there at the George Christie column from a party. I used to go to a lot of parties. And, um, and they said, oh, she looks like what we're looking for, which was an Italian girl. And, um, and then... Uh, she was sleeping. She's like, oh, her what, what is cookie. mommy doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, so that's how they, they called the union, see if I was in the union. They found me, I auditioned, and, you know, took me about a month of waiting, month and a half, uh, but then, then I got it. So that's did you did you have to audition with um, Robin Williams? Oh, or? yeah. Oh, yeah. I auditioned with Robin, uh, and I couldn't believe it. I'm like, oh, my God, Mork, because Mork <laughs> yes. and Mindy was a series, TV series that was huge all over the world, not only in the uh, in United States. So I couldn't believe that I was uh, auditioning to maybe do a show with, with Paul, you know, with uh, Robin Williams. Yes. No, I mean, you guys definitely had chemistry. Um, there was this energy just watching the movie again recently. And it must have been like a, a dream come true being on the set for you. I mean, what were you feeling? Oh, just You know, uh, Robin made you feel very comfortable because he was a very extremely shy person, believe it or not. Um, that's why he left us so fast because I think he was too much for this world. Mm -hmm. Too much. He was uh, too good of a person. And uh, so by him being uh, that introverted and shy, he would make you feel also safe and very at ease. Uh, you know, it, it was because he was such a genius because all that shyness, shyness, uh, was hidden through his comedy. Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, he was so excellent. Nobody would have thought that he was that kind of person. You know. Yeah, and it was interesting. I was talking to somebody the other day about how actors that are very talented sometimes they on stage they shine, but when they're by themselves they. They want to be alone, and they're just in their own shell, and they're not out there, you know, glamorous and promoting themselves. Yeah. Um, would you say that that you know what you've noticed in the entertainment world that uh, is there? A, uh, I know because actors are always when they work on set together, they become friends instantly. It's it's almost like you're able to connect faster and make that connection quickly. Uh, and I know that helps in real life because some people don't have that. They have a hard time meeting people. Have you, and, and because you've worked on yourself spiritually, have you found that working with that energy now, and, and, and you had it before, there was always a, a passion of love and, and you had this vibrancy that you, you, nobody can really learn how to do that. You're born with it. Uh, you have that. And I think that many people are looking, how do I get that? I mean, what would you suggest for somebody who's trying to, you know, make themselves happy and, and maybe they don't have such a good life at the moment, but what can they do? Some tips, the Maria Conchita tips on how to be happy. Oh my God. To shine. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's okay not to always be happy. That's the first thing we have to learn. It's okay because we're humans and we are, we are not alone in this world. 
and a lot of things are happening and a lot of energy is running around, good and bad. So it's okay when you feel down and, and when you fall. The most important thing is to try to get up again mm -hmm. and to clean yourself and, you know, and, and, and just, uh, just try to not... I think it's important for you to know what's going on in the world, but not to be too intense, emerge in it, because mm -hmm. then it's going to bring you down, Correct. and then we are not going to be strong to receive whatever it's, we are going to receive with what's going on, which is we need to be very strong. Um, but I think the, the way to be happier most of the time is by being you, by not wanting to be someone else by not following rules that are against your beliefs as long as you are not going to hurt others. Uh, your life is your life to live. No one can tell you how to live it. No one can tell you what to believe in, what to uh, do, uh, how to behave, because they don't know what's going to make you happy. Uh, they, society always said, oh, you, you have to, you know, you have to you go to school, you, you graduate, you go find a job, you get married, you have kids. Well, hello, I've never been married. I chose not to have kids. My kids are my, my little animals. Uh, and, uh, and that's what makes me happy. That, that's what makes me happy. Um, also, having a job that you are not pleased with can make you very a, a very unhappy person yeah. you know so but i think when you like you said if you're authentic and you love you yourself job opportunities are going to come you know yeah and and also you are not going to be hired because of being yourself so it can come both ways. Mm -hmm. You can get a lot of great offers because people can see through you, they can see your vibe, your energy, your soul, but at the same time, um, you, can, you, you could also not be taken uh, uh, thought of because you don't, you don't follow rules either political rules or what or or whatever it's out there that the a majority of people in our industry believe in but I don't uh, that can also hurt you but when you think you know what I don't really care <laughs> I don't care exactly I've lost a lot of jobs because of me being I mean American citizen yes I am and I love this country but I'm a Cuban Venezuelan. That's right. And you go through, a Cuba, Cubans, Cuban Venezuelans go through things in life that other people haven't. Mm -hmm. And no one can tell you that you're wrong because you lived it. Correct, correct. And they have to respect that. Mm -hmm. But that can take away jobs yeah. if you don't think like them. Yeah, yeah. And I think something that we need very much that, ha that we've lost it is respect. Mm. People have lost um, everything that contains the word respect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to agree to disagree. We have to enjoy having discussions without screaming and without insulting others. Mm -hmm. You cannot point a finger to someone not knowing what that person went through, mm -hmm. be it religion, be it politics, be it uh, um, what you think, you know, um, uh, y you are, you know, mm -hmm. we don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, it's, it's very sad that we've lost that respect that it used to be, especially in this town. Mm -hmm. This town uh, that is very leftist, obviously I'm not because of being a Cuban Venezuelan, but I've been here 36 years. What does that tell you? That I respect. Mm -hmm. You want to yep. be what you want to You are what you are. As long as you don't mess around with me, as mm -hmm. long as you don't make me do things mm -hmm. or make me say things or make me believe things that I don't believe in, then it's fine. I don't make people 
yeah. believe anything exactly. that they're not. And, and I think everybody has, we all have to make choices that serve us for our body and our mind and our wellness. And I know that you do a ritual of you either do cleansing or you're into, um, now you're doing a lot of meditation. Tell me how's that Oh how's my that God, going? Gary, you know, <laughs> it's so hard for me because my mind wanders like, I don't know even, it can be here in Japan, now it can be here in Italy, now it can be in Spain, now it can be in Venezuela, you know, it's like, I'm in LA. It's very hard for me to concentrate uh, and so, yeah, I go twice a year. I try to go twice a year to a um, holistic center for two weeks each time. And it helps me so much because the classes are amazing. We only eat, we clean with just just plants. Plant. Not, not when you go to veg vegetarians or raw food restaurants that, oh, the food is so good. No, no, no. <laughs> Here the food is not really that tasty. <laughs> uh, but you don't go because the food is tasty. You go because it's a, it's, the food is healthy. The, the people that go there, the classes that you take, the vibe, the energy in this place is so pure. And, and, and it's about respect yeah, and it's yeah. about teaching you how to be happy within yourself, you know. And every time I've seen you come back, you have this glow. <laughs> You're like flying through the, you know, day. It's really amazing what food can do and men mental wellness to make one really shine. Yeah, because also you you can't you know you, you don't you're not you don't know what's going on in the world you can't use your phone unless you're in your room um so you are free and protected from everything that's going on and people you can be there with a trillionaire most rich person in the world or with the one that has less money in the world but they can go there because we the guests, you know, we donate uh -huh. $20, 25 500 50 whatever, so others that can't, uh, can go. Um, and we're all the same. And mm. that's what people should understand. We are all the same. The same. Mm. It doesn't matter how much money you have, how much power you have, and what I tell people, oh, do you need to go to the bathroom? Hmm, do you need to eat? Do you need to sleep? You do well, then you are just like me, you know. I mean, the day I meet someone that doesn't need to sleep or eat or go to the bathroom or whatever, then I'm like, oh my god, yeah. Then I'm going to like, wow. <laughs> Meanwhile, well, the same, exactly. You know? And some of us had more luck, or some of us worked harder, or some whatever it is that you are in a different position mm -hmm. uh, of power. Um, but uh, that doesn't mean that I'm going to respect more uh, a banker than the person who cleans the streets. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. As a human being, they should be respected equal. Correct. And I know we're excited about your new movie that you're going to be doing in Europe, in, in, in England, right? Or Wales. Wales. Uh, this spring. Uh, and it's called Mr. Hyde. And... Um, what, what, I know you love Europe. Uh, have you been to Wales before? No, oh, never. Okay. And it I, is... haven't, I haven't been to England in 30 years. Okay. Because every time I go to Europe, I go first to Spain. Right. That's where my blood comes from. My grandparents were from Spain. I have a lot of friends over there. And the energy is my energy. So I go to Spain, I go to, or, or, uh, and or France and or Italy. So it's very exciting and that I'm going to be working with Michael Sheen, an amazing Wales actor, mm -hmm. amazing human being. And it's the story of Hyde and Jack, Jekyll Mr. and Hyde. Mr. Hyde, you correct. Know? And uh, it's really, and my character is, I'm very mean. I'm <laughs> so mean. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite country uh, or location that you would would say uh, I love, and then the one that you'd want to really visit. What would that? What was the famous place? The best place you say I feel so home there. Where would that be? Oh well, yeah, that's in, that's. I feel Spain? at home in Spain. Okay. Yeah. And what would be and the also dream? also Mexico here oh, in this continent. Okay, Mexico. Mexico too. Yeah. What would be the country you say I want to visit? I want to go. Like mine is Iceland. I have to go to Iceland. I don't know why. I feel. 
I love all these islands like seashells or mm -hmm. uh, 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 these islands that have all this, like I've never been to Bali. Uh, I've never been to, I mean, I've been to, you know, Japan, which I love, uh, but uh, I've been to Thailand, I've been to Singapore, mm. but I haven't been to these little places right on the ocean. And, you know, it's like, oh my God, I would love to go to, I'm 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 an island, you know. Although although I love mountains too, but I'm more a water person. Being a Cancer, yes, uh, you know, uh, water attracts me a lot. But mountains too. I have a beautiful house up in the mountains. It's you know, and nice. it's just gorgeous. Well, I am so pleased and excited about all your new projects that are coming out or in the works. A new movie, a new Christmas movie, new music. Uh, and a new uh, book. So it's really yeah. great that we can't wait to see all this new Maria Conchita information. Yes, Gary. Yes. Yeah, we have a great movie and a lot of things happening. And if, if you guys want to know more about it, just go to my Instagram, which is Maria Conchita underscore A. You can find there what I'm doing, my concerts. I have a concert coming up yes. December 10 in Mexico. in Mexico City at a place called Lunario, which is a, a, a part uh, of uh, the, the National Auditorium. More information in, in my Instagram account or, you know, my YouTube page, Facebook account is Maria Conchita Alonso Oficial, which is just one F because it's not in English. Uh, and anyway, a lot of things are happening. I'm so glad that uh, we are here together. We've been meaning to do this for a while yes, now. Yes. I also have a nonprofit foundation. Oh, yes. Tell us about that. That I help a lot of uh, animals in Venezuela called VEE -E, and then another word, Fauna like the fauna, mm -hmm. F-A-U-N-A. You can also find it in, in my Instagram, how you can help. Uh, you know, we we do need a lot of help because because as days go by, they receive very little help. And when people realize, when they see that they helped save someone or, or brought food to someone to feed the animals and save lives, the, what you feel is like, oh my God, you know, it feels so good. Mm. It feels so good. So anyway, every time you help others, not only will that bring that back to you in a good way, but the way you're going to feel is amazing. Once you find that out, you won't stop helping others. That's right. We have to be of service. And Maria Conchita, thank you so much for spending this time with me. Uh, I'm excited to have front row seats with you at all your events and projects. And thank you for spending this time with me. Thank you, Gary. Cookie and, and cookie, <laughs> Can they see Cookie? I don't know. Cookie and I are very happy to be <laughs> here with you. <laughs> yes, yes. Right, Cookie. Yeah, Great. there we go. Blessings to all. Thank you so much. I'm Gary Quinn. Thank you for joining me today on another episode of Ready, Set, Live. Until next time, be well.